Survivor News. 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 Dot dot dot. Welcome back to the Purple Pants Podcast, Survivor News Edition, covering Survivor Season 46, Episode 6. We are back with the baby boys, the Jack to the Atkins. You might know him from Netflix Season 2. Jackery, how you living? Living pretty good. Life's a little chaotic right now, but I'm excited to be here with the baby boys talking some Survivor. That's the most consistent thing in my life. <laughs> but, oh, I'm, doing, I'm doing well. That's good. The, the length of the hair is growing in. Jack's got the, you know, the the textured in the front. We're living for it. Uh, and welcome back to the podcast. The man, the myth, the one who is in the clear. When DZ Holland, how when are you feeling the... today? The Ooh. goat. Oh. Okay. Shout out to the goat is going to be dropping. I believe it's May 8th. And you know your boy Wendeezy, Jill Zarin, Davon, Tech, and a host of other goats. And so you know my guy Joey Sasso. Joey Sasso from the circle. And so you know, you know, we're we gonna have to cover it. But anyway, Wendeezy, we're in Pittsburgh right now. How you living? How you feeling? I'm good. <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. I'm feeling good, man. We are the baby boys are back. Great episode. I'd love to talk about it. Yes. Great to see y'all. It's good to be in Pittsburgh. I just drove through some hail to get here. I know you see the skin. I know you see the beard. I know you see it looks like I'm glistening. Bryce, what do you think about my lighting in here? I think it's trash. <laughs> oh, wait, do you have my light? Ah! <laughs> so we are on the road. We're in Pittsburgh right now. And you know, the baby boys don't stop. I have a whole little podcast set up and I left it in the car. And when DZ has my light, he actually could probably turn the yellow down a little bit and turn the white up. But listen, uh, when DZ and I were in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, listen, was a whole vibe. A whole vibe, a whole vibe. Last year, Wendell was filming The Goat, so I had to hold it down. And I kept telling Wendell, uh, Pittsburgh is a very special market. It's so fun. It's lively. And Jack, the Yings delivered last night, it looked, okay? It looked I, I didn't deliver. Like all that for Pittsburgh. It, was, it looked like it was a proper, proper party. It was uh, definitely fun. Uh, it's like small city, big town type of vibe. The the love that we received is just amazing. We had uh, some amazing, dope people in the building. We had Jared. We had Brett. We had Maya from season 36. We had Jesus from Local Love. We had Heidi. We had Jam. And Wendell, who do we have? The legend from Big Brother in the building. The legend from Big Brother. Oh. Danielle Reyes, I thought you were going to skip her. Yeah, she was in the building. Danielle was in the building, Big D. And we also had some special guests. Uh, they weren't from Mars, but they might have been from uh, Venus. Uh, yeah, I just can't say enough about Pittsburgh, though. It was truly so much fun. Uh, we'll definitely be back. And if you're having FOMO, there's no need to have FOMO because your baby boys were hitting the road. We're going to Dallas, Texas next Wednesday. And we have a host of slew of friends coming out. We have Danny and Kiki. We've got Mike and Meg. We've got Michaela. We've got Lauren from season 44, right? Uh, who else we have? We got from the circle player. What is it? Player one? Player 101? Player 300, Trey from the circle. You guys, oh, I'm sorry, from um, from Squid Game. I know you guys watch him and his mother doing a great job on the show, so he's going to yeah. come out. And you know my mans, my mens, okay? I got Austin's going to be there. We've got Xander. We've got, got Liana. We've got yeah, half of the so cookout Chicago. coming. Oh, I'm they were talking okay. Dallas. I was like, whoa. Sorry, yeah, uh, I am talking. We mixed Chicago. it up. <laughs> uh, 
in Dallas, though, we've got Cassidy, we've got Lauren Hart, we've got Missy Payne, uh, we have Michaela Bradshaw, we have Abraham, we've got Jed, uh, we've got Patricia Petties, and yeah, so Dallas is going to be a vibe, and you know, word on the block is some special guests are going to be coming after Dallas, we're heading to Chicago, April 24th, and that's where the lineup is going to be amazing, and hey, right. after, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, what are you going to do with both Xander mm. And Austin and Wendell in the same building. Well, minus Wendell, I'm gonna be glad it's night in the pimps and trying to catch that midnight train. <laughs> okay. Uh to Chicago. And after that, it's not done. Then we've got the big three, the final three. After that, we've got Boston. We've got Philly and all roads lead to the finale. And if you know, you know it's going to be a good time. The BWP Tour 46 is in full effect. You can get your tickets now. I would hurry if you want to join us because a lot of these events are getting close to selling out. And we want to make sure that you can party uh, with your baby boys. Click the link on the Bryce and Win present Instagram bio or Twitter bio. Uh, yeah, anything else you got, Wendy's? The only thing I will say, and I'm just going to double down on this, Bryce, you know the momentum towards the end of these seasons. The second half of the seasons, things pick up, and that's how it is at our events. And we got some big ones. The last three events, Boston, Philly, finale. Boom, boom, boom. These three events are going to be unbelievable. You, Philly, you know the venue. We're at Fringe Bar. We got the bar, and we got the movie screen, the movie theater. Boston, we have a new venue. It's huge. And, of course, the finale. We've already sold almost as many tickets as we sold to the premiere. I haven't even got my ticket yet. So, <laughs> Jackery, Jack, Chris, Christine, uh, Christine Dola hit us up and said, "What's going on with the finale?" Mm -hmm. she, she hit me up too. I said, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll, we'll see. There might be a special guest appearance, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see but uh no yeah i'm definitely hoping to come out to the finale so it's been tough this season a lot of east coast bryson when baby boy is busy and poor so i haven't been able to come out to as much but i know for a, a fact or not, almost a fact that i will be out in new york so i'm very 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 excited to get i mean usually every season i'm at a few and i haven't been able to do that this season so i'm just really excited for that new york one i'm gonna really try to come for like at least like a week or something to come hang out. And so um, it's been, a, I got that on my schedule crossed off, you know? Okay. We need you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's get into a name for a name. Uh, I think I watched this episode yesterday, clearly at our watch party and I got up at four in the morning and I watched the episode and I was so excited. I, I almost FaceTime Jack because I wanted to talk. I have so many thoughts and opinions. Uh, so I'm really excited for this episode. So Jackery, what you got for us? Yeah, Bryce, I, I think we could go a little bit of a different direction with this episode because I'm so excited to hear about how excited you are and it, it like makes me even more pumped. Um, because it's this mergatory episode, you know, there's a lot of things in flux and a lot of moving pieces all on the same beach. Uh, and for that reason, I feel like you had these questions that you were itching to ask. I would love to just pass the mic over to you and let you start just what's jumping to your mind and, and start just hitting me with hitting me and when with questions and, and okay. just, discuss because there was a lot of, I would say, um, polarizing gameplay in this episode where I was thought there was a lot of sloppy moves, but maybe there's some good moves and we can, we can get into it. But yeah, wh wh where do you want to start? Bryce? So let's start with Tim, right? So my first um, point I want to make is that when they were idol hunting and Mariah says, Tim is playing hard. I feel like I now have the context to it, right? Because I feel like before that, we didn't really see much of Tim. Would you agree? Yeah. Now, I would say at this episode, I feel like the big dog players have emerged. Like that, like the people that want to run this game and have stake in this game have emerged. And I just want to say, I think that Tim 
emerged this game, right? Like, I felt like when he was questioned about the bring your friend alliance, uh, he stumbled a little or like it was a little weird. However, I wasn't mad at his reasoning. And I feel like that's a good point on his part. Uh, I also feel like when Venus started scrambling and Tim kind of, I don't know, I just really felt like Tim really started playing or we got to see him play. And so I just feel like there are three big dogs right now. And I think that Tim has emerged to one of them. So I just wanted to know what you guys think of Tim and whether or not you think he is a big dog playing. I got two things to say before Jack does his thing. Jack, okay, I know you go, go ahead. So first thing I had to say um, about his whole bring a friend and him choosing Mariah, uh, I'm sorry, him choosing Dr. Maria was she his number one or was it really Charlie or, or was it really Ben? Like what was. So I think when they were, I think that Tim, in my opinion, Tim has been talking about, they talk about their kids. I think that Tim feels like Maria is solid and he can trust her. I and that's someone that his game can go further with, even though he might've just been connecting a little closer with Ben or. Right. The opposite. But, yeah. The way communication worked, though, Tim, like, you know, if Let you somebody think somebody know. might be good for you, you might want to tell them. Uh, okay. But I kind of like that, though. I think that, like, you know, Ben kind of choosing Dr. Maria was a curveball. Uh, but you got to you got to tell the curveball where to go, because Dr. Maria said, hold on, what the who? OK, he ain't my number one. He ain't my number two. I don't even know if he'd be my number three, but I want to know what's your thought, Jack, on Tim's, like, Tim's emergence. Yeah, I, I don't, <clears throat> I'm not super duper optimistic on Tim. Uh, and, and it, I don't think he's really doing too much wrong, but I just feel like, for me, the big red flag here is that he sees Maria as his number one ally. And to Maria, he's like her number three out of, four people from Sega, which to me is just, I, I don't mind where Tim's head is at strategically, but I think that's not really a great sign about your social game. Um, and I think a lot of this could have been resolved if Tim had come back from the journey and just said, Hey Maria, they threw out this idea. You know, I don't know if I, I wanted to bring it to you and see what you think. Like you don't have to, I know he wants to keep his options open, but I think communicating that to Maria it lets you kind of parse through what the best move is without necessarily showing that you're committed to anything other than Maria at that point. Um, because like you said, Bryce, open communication with your close, what you do to be your closest ally is so important. You need someone in the game that you can talk to honestly and not worry about them going and like leaking your info about you. Um, so yeah, I'm just, Tim, okay. I definitely think Tim is going to play pretty hard but I just don't think he has the social capital right now where he's going to be able to make a deep run. So let me ask you this, right? Because I'm with you, Jack, because I was I'm with you, right? Because I'm like, you don't work this way. But then he gets in the confessional and he says that sometimes people lock into alliances too soon or prematurely. And so when he gave me that foresight and when he says to Q, I saw you and Maria talking. I like that. I didn't want to jump in. And then when Q kind of actually has the conversation with Maria, I feel like she's talked to Q. So it's because if could Tim have been really smart about this? Because if Maria holds him at number three and Tim came back from the journey and said, hey, I put you down. Like you would think she might be like, I don't know if I could trust it. But the fact that Q brought mm -hmm. it to her, now she's coming to him and he's like, hey, that's what we talked about. Uh, I didn't want to say anything too much soon. I wanted you to feel people's personality. Like, I don't think it's the best idea, but I like how it played out. I'm mostly with you, Bryce. I, I don't love how it played out. I like, I get Tim's logic here, right? And that's why I don't think, I don't have a huge issue with it. The thing is, I like I get that you don't want to lock in too soon, but I I think there's but this you need to lock in. <laughs> there's this rule in Survivor. It's like never say no to an alliance, right? And so Tim could come back from that journey and say, "Hey Maria, they like I said, they threw this alliance idea out to me, and I want to know what you think about it. And if you don't want to do it, then we don't have to do it. But 
like it, that doesn't necessarily lock you into anything, right? It's just keep keeping Maria informed. Now all of a sudden Maria's on the beach, and then Tim's like, "Hey, about four days ago, uh, I got us in an alliance." And Maria's like, "Maybe you could have like uh, given me a little heads up, like right?" Because now Maria's like, "I was running around all day on this beach with people that." I didn't know I was in an alliance. <laughs> like, I would be like, dude, give me like some sort of heads up. And I think that's the issue. I don't mind Tim's thing of like, let her go feel things out herself. Like, I don't need to put her in anything. But I think there's a middle ground where it's like, just give if she if she's really your closest ally, give her that info. Let her do what she wants with it. And maybe that's why that lack of communication is why Tim is not Maria's number one in return. Yeah. I mean, just interesting to see. But yeah. again, I think he, we got to see more of Tim, uh, how he thinks, how he moves, like what he, and it's the first time we've really got to see more of him. Yeah. So I, I enjoyed it. And I was like, okay, he's playing. Also, I, I loved, is super random, but I loved when, uh, like, I think he was pressing him about talking to Maria and he was like, it'll be done before nightfall. <laughs> I thought that was so random, but I was like, what a funny choice of like, <laughs> words for the time that you're going to get it done. <laughs> like, <laughs> to um, talk about, because Bryce, you also mentioned all these people um, coming together oh. and these big characters rising. And oh. I, think, I think the list of big characters are a little bit, I think it's longer than what you mentioned, because oh. I see the Tevins, the Sodas, Q, I see Kenzie, I see Ben, so many of these like big characters, big personalities, but also there are people that are ready to just like sit and wait and snipe. Like, I feel like Ben, he's still like sitting and calculating and, and waiting. I'm still not going to say a name. I'm I'm a sniper. But like the cues, the, even the hunters, like you see these big dogs coming. In. It's almost mm -hmm. like uh, Game of Thrones when all of the like lords and people would come together. And it's like, wow, I can't wait to see how this how this answer is coming. Uh, but that's why I feel. I think a lot of people are playing a little too hard right now. And that's why I feel really good about like the Ben's and the Charlie's and the Tiffany's right now, mm -hmm. where I think literally as long as you're, if you're on this beach and you're just a chill person and you're not doing too much, you're going to go deep. Cause a lot of people are, I think playing not very well and are going to kind of dig their own graves a little bit. Oh, well to that point, And early in the season, when I saw Q, I maybe even before, before the season, I'm like thinking Chris Noble. And I'm like, I was scared about him, right? Then when I watched him, I realized, okay, this guy is just the athlete that has won a lot, probably lost a lot. Under Like he can manage his tempers. He can motivate. He knows what he's doing out there. But I'm starting to see maybe a little more Chris Noble out here in mm – -hmm. All right, it's the merge time. Now I'm gonna flex my might. I'm gonna move these. I'm gonna get these people to do this. This people to do that. And now I'm just like, yo, that took Chris Noble right off the island. Win DZ. Okay, let's talk about Q. Okay, first of all, I feel like Q been locked up. He's been locked up. Okay. Is he a he, he might be a guy. They let him out on the merge. Q. <laughs> Bryce broke his microphone. Bryce, your, your mic unplugged. Trying to run like you. Bryce's microphone is broken. But, yeah, Q, uh, Q, Bryce thinks Q was locked up. Q took off running, okay? Uh, and Q went from zero to a thousand, right? Like, Q, like, Coach Q is coaching. And I love to see it, right? Because I think it's great survivor. And it's like Q is now in the game, right? Like he's literally become the godfather. He's taking it upon himself to say, hey, you talk to Tim. He, he said what we would do. Oh, oh, all right. Hey, hey, Hunter. We good. We good. And, you know, um, what's the green tribe? Sega. Sega. They're being so closed mouthed and that's making Q uncomfortable. Now, I do have to ask Q the conversation he had with Mariah, right? You know, it's it's literally like, have you ever watched the first 48? Like Q is like the detective talking to the people. So he's like, hey, hey, Mariah, nice to meet you. Hi, Q. How you liking it out here? It's good. Uh, you, Who y'all vote for? Uh... 
It's Jim. You like Survivor? Yeah. Who your favorite Survivor? Aubrey. Oh, okay. Two seconds later, we got to get her out of here. She watched the game of Survivor. She knows Survivor. <laughs> that was so crazy. But, but, but let me tell you something. There's something to putting a name out there and a reason and letting it percolate because like even in ghost Island, man, there were times when people were saying how social Sebastian is. And there were times when I was on that Island, like, man, <laughs> if I sit next to this guy that everyone loves at the end of the game, he going to steal some votes from me. So there's, there's something to like just sprinkling a name out there and a reason sometimes it can catch fire in this case. I think that was just one more thing to push people towards Mo. Yeah, I just feel like he's he, he doing the right thing. But it's like, I think because he's used to being an athlete, he's used to being a coach. You don't need to put your name and face on it, Q, right? Like, it's like, you. Q yeah. is the judge, the jury, the lawyer, the courtroom, the gavel, the summons. Q is everything. Uh, and I love it though, like because it's like Q's like I just spent all like all my life over here, uh, starving it with this tribe, and now he has a fresh game. But I am just worried about how active he is in these island streets. Yeah, he's definitely I think gonna get a little lost in the sauce. But I did think it was so funny that like the whole Aubrey thing, <laughs> and it made me wonder. It, it, it made me think about like. There's so many casual fans who would be horrible at Survivor where their answer would be like, oh, my favorite player is Boston Rob. And Q would be like, oh, you mean I get you out of here? Like, and it's like they're not they're not going to play like Boston Rob. Uh, I, I, wanted, I have a little question for you guys. Um, if you're out there and you're in Mariah's shoes, and this should be like kind of like funny, I guess, but who with Q's – frame of mind now who would you say is your favorite player in order for q to think the best of you first merge boot win dz holland winners at war <laughs> okay i'm gonna say myself <laughs> well, I, 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 let's go let's go someone else like i don't know q might be like oh she said price <laughs> don't trust he's got a podcast right he's got a Bryce, podcast he talk a lot <laughs> He know Jack Atkins. We got to get him. He got to go. Uh, mm. If I'm Mariah, I say, like, sure. I say, I like all the Mariahs. Mm. All the Mariahs have been like pre-merged boots. Like people just, name Mariah? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm like all the Mariahs. Because there was a- Like baby with pacifiers. Me and Mariah go back like babies with pacifiers. Oh, dirty dog, no liar. Keep and it tastes fire. like honey when your love yeah. comes over me. Oh, Jackery, I got a, a sin to see for the two. Oh, you taste the honey. Shiba, bop, 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 yo, bop, bop, bop. Shiba, dub, yo, bop, 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 That's all I got. Uh, now, I'm going to just ask you, a, can, just, can you guess the artist's first what? name? Mariah Carey. Oh. <laughs> Was that right? You are. That is Mariah Carey. I feel like I had a good hint going in. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've um, had really good hints before, Chad. No, it's true. Um, well, Wendell, Wendell I, I don't know. Like, for actually, well, because here's my thing is, like, if you name, Aubrey was, like, a pretty, I feel like, obvious choice for her. It was very reasonable. I'm like, well, if I if you pick someone who's, like, a deep cut, who, like, isn't that technically, technically like, an uh, intimidating player, but you're, like, yeah, I feel, I feel a lot like like uh, Ian from Palau. <laughs> I mean, like, clearly, you watched some Survivor. Like, um, but I, I feel like it's also a loaded question. Like when you ask someone that you're, you know, they're going to say a player that has done well. Like, exactly. what if she would have said like Kelly Wentworth? Like, you know, that he oh, not to, like so. It's like it, I just feel like anything she would have said. Uh, yeah. I feel like. Q would have been like, oh no. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. It's like if you name someone who like 
maybe isn't a great player is like a deep cut. I feel like that either shows some self awareness or it shows like you've seen a lot of Survivor. Like I, I often sort of joke like if I was on the show when they ask you like what players you most like, one of them would be like Brendan Sinat from Survivor Token Jeans. He was like the first merge boot of Survivor Token Jeans and just like a pretty normal dude. And I think people would be like. How do you even know who that is? <laughs> like, I feel like that's more threatening than being like Boston Rob or Jeremy Collins. Like, even though they're obviously they're great players, but it's like that's just a common pick. Um, so I just that, that was, it was pretty wild of Q. But I guess I agree with you, Wendell. Just to have any reason to frame someone, I was like, and Q's done that before, like with Jelinski, you know. Uh, maybe that's who I would say. I'd say Jelinski and people would but- not be- can we then immediately but so i know we're going all over the place but q jelinski's again uh when he hears there's another plan and he's like oh she going against the plan i'm ready to get rid of her now like and it's like oh okay uh so that is interesting. Um, another player that I think is a big dog that has risen to the occasion, in my opinion, is Venus. Uh, I think this episode, now, I don't agree with her. I agree with everything, right? I just don't know if it's the best long game move. But I feel like, you know, they came down with these names and Venus is like, so why do I have to subscribe for that? And I feel like we've seen Venus being scrappy this whole time, uh, but she hasn't had the numbers to work with. And now that we're all on one tribe and like she does not want it to be a lady to go home and she wants it to be a male to go home. And she starts naming these points. And although we don't maybe see a lot of people agree with it, you can see some of the ladies be like, "Mm, she's kind of right. And I love the fact that like Venus doesn't just accept the status quo. She's like, I'm going to buck back. And prior to this, it's like, has it just been like her talk? Uh, but I feel like this episode, we got to see that Venus is about action. And so I really love the fact that it's like, okay, Venus is actually out here knucking and bucking. Uh, what do you think of her move? Um, look, for, I do want to say, and I, I mean this, Venus is great casting and she's great TV and she's bringing in energy that we haven't seen in a while. It's really entertaining. But as far as her gameplay goes, it's pretty rough. And I will say her logic behind things is actually very sound. She has the right idea about a lot of things. Like I think voting Charlie was actually the smartest move. But the problem is her approach in her social game is really not – like for the pre-merge, I think a lot of us gave her the benefit of the doubt of like, okay, you're not really just not like fitting in with this particular tribe. But then as soon as we hit this new beach – she's having like the same issues where she's going too hard. And the analogy I sort of just came up in my head is like, are you ever with like a new group of like your friend and like their friends? And it's like a new group of people. And they're like, Oh, should we go to like Popeye's or should we go to McDonald's? And then you're like, well, I really think we should go to Taco Bell. (laughs) And then they're like, no, like we're all feeling like maybe McDonald's or or, uh, Popeye's. You're like, I I think Taco Bell is way better. And everyone's like, who is this person? Like, why are they injecting their... And it's like, maybe Taco Bell would be the best pick. But when you're with a new crowd, sometimes you just have to be like, I'm cool with whatever. So in the, in this context, it's like when you're on... Like, when it's your name or someone else, you, like, pushing back against that plan. It, like, when it's like... Mar- when For Venus, when it's like, it's Mariah or Venus. And you're like, well, I don't want it to be Mariah. A lot of times that's going to make people be like, well, then it could be Venus. Well, like- again, but it's like, I get, I agree. Like, it's like an uphill battle, but I feel like it's her taking that on. I kind of, I respected the fact that she was like, if we allow this to happen, right? Like it could then be a trend and I don't want it to be that trend. So well, like- I- I don't know. I, I just respect it. Uh, and also, I feel- of the people they could vote for, five out of six were women. So it's not like there's this whole... I mean, like, I know. And 
the problem is it's like a lot of times with that sort of like female alliance or women's alliance, it, it can be like um, a self-fulfilling prophecy where if Venus is actively being like, oh, I don't want any girls to go. Now the guy has got to be like, well, now that we got to get girls out. There's a women's alliance. Uh, whereas I, I really don't think that was a, a, a thought before, especially, I mean, in the, in the new era, we've seen a lot of the pre-merge have sort of a disproportionate amount of women go which I think is reasonable to push back against. But this season, the split was pretty even. Um, it was, yeah. So I just think it's a little bit. Um, I mean, I, okay. I think Venus's logic of getting Charlie out was great. I think for, for everybody but Sega, getting Charlie out is the best move. And so I think Venus definitely has some strategic chops. The problem is I think she just came in really hot. And like, we even saw like her confessional about being like, I feel like I'm running the show now. And I was sort of like, no, that's just how it feels when more people are talking with you. Like, it's just, that's just what it feels like to have an open line of communication in the game. And I feel like she should have spent some time developing that and developing those relationships rather than, okay, now I'm having conversations. Let me just go. Even though she's right about what should happen. That's the thing. You sometimes you just have to like chill out and, I think it's easier to say that, Jack, when you, uh, again, because I feel like she's similar to Q a little bit in this, is where, like, she, is, the the floodgates are open. Like, she actually has a chance to speak to people that are, and she's making her case. Now, mind you, is she coming a little hard? Yes. Yeah. But in this situation, it might be enough to, like, sway somebody or to know where she's coming. So I don't know. Like, again, I agree with you. I don't know how yeah. this is going to work in her yeah. end game. But I like the fact that she's she's coming out like she's like, listen. But another issue that I had is like early on, she's talking with, I think, like Mariah. And she's like, yeah, I'm not really fitting in with Nami or whatever. She's like, I could get, I'll tell you guys about our cracks, but only if you tell me about yours. And it's like, well, if you're on the bottom. A name for a name. Okay. Yeah, you don't. If you're on the bottom, you can't be holding these people to deals. Like, and I think that's listen. Like, why not? Why not? Because, like, if you're on the bottom, and this is actually a mistake that Mariah made as well, is, like, if you're on the bottom, just, I don't know, just accept it and, like, look for new options. I think Mariah actually, Mariah didn't do have any, like, glaring mistakes throughout the season, but I think she had a lot of underrated mistakes this episode. The biggest one being this whole lying about being in the unanimous vote, like, just go to the new beach and say that you were not in the vote and like your own tribe isn't gonna like that's the truth and then everyone else is gonna be like okay this is the one person that's not in the majority on sega like why would we target her and so and she, i think if she just did that she'd probably make it to at least the middle of the merge just based on that knowledge and it's like you can give them that information but you don't have to give them your forefront Man. with it you know what i mean like yeah i was out on it but it, we still see it strong like what's up like you know like so i think that that was huge right and so i it's also leads me to want to talk about the merge feast loved the merge feast and i was a little irked at you first of all you know i love ben okay that's you know that's my baby boy and i loved him but they irked me at this merge feast like okay we giving up names and then it's like they clearly gave up a name who they like clearly they said venus now when it comes to y'all now y'all like oh <sighs> yeah yeah, yeah. They, um, you, they, going, they, you going to eat the rest of that sandwich <laughs> they clearly had a strategy bryce like we will be tight we got the same numbers as them so we're gonna keep it locked up it's gonna be a standoff and it didn't this work. It, I, makes, yeah. it makes them look like this group that, all right, now we're going to look for all the cracks in y'all. And now the other two tribes could just work against y'all. Exactly. Like that, that, that's what I like. For, this is the thing. This is what I need to know from Jack. And I need to know it now. <laughs> Shouldn't they like. Give for me, this up. discredits now, now respectfully because I love Ben and I love Tim and I love Dr. Uh -oh. Marie, I love all of them. Uh -oh. But for me, this kind of like discredits this. I gotta take y'all down a little, y'all. I gotta take y'all down a survivor notch a little bit. Like, like, whose idea, who 
I can't even talk. Who thought this plan was good is what I want to know. They locked solid and locked in, whereas this other tribe that has been playing a great team game together and winning a lot yeah. is saying, hey, look, we but, got cracks all over the place. Let's work together. But listen, but listen, my thing is, is that yes, but if you are coming to the table, you're agreeing with everything that we're saying. And then, you and then like they're giving you that and then you like that stone wall will then get you effed up because it's like, then it's like, okay, then we'll just decide which one of y'all that like, we're trying to come to the table. And so it's like, don't get me wrong. Listen, I'm all with the solidarity. Stand up, stand up for your rights, stand up for your people. <laughs> Cause I have a dream, like I'm here for it. But it's like, yeah. all of y'all survivors, y'all didn't have a contingency plan. Like y'all just thought y'all was going to be like, oh, look at the time. <laughs> I got to go. Good chat with y'all. And it's like, do y'all know who y'all chatting with? Y'all are chatting with Q. You think he gonna let that go? You yeah. think like you, I know Q want to just pop up on Tim like, like what you say? Like, you ain't gonna give me no name. Like, I, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, th and this is partly why Venus is somewhat messier approach might have actually saved her in a sense is that nami is so all over the place that if you're yanu who obviously all three of them are safe this episode you're picking a side you want to go with the side that has more cracks and that's like i mean pretty basic strategy and so it really 100 percent agree it makes no sense it, obviously it's hard because sega doesn't want to like throw their own people under the bus but if you just present this united front Everyone else in the game was going to be like, well, we have to break that up. Whereas I actually think Reba last season was a prime example of they had their core four reach the merge, but they still had J Maya there. They still had Sifu there. And in order to preserve their core numbers, they were like, yeah, we can get J Maya out. We can get Sifu out. And to everybody else, it looked like, oh, Reba's willing to play ball. But in reality, you're just cutting your own people to make sure your numbers are safe. And I think that's something that's a common theme, especially in the new era where there's not a lot of swaps is sort of naturally the tribes are going to pick themselves down a little somewhat evenly, right? Like say a bunch of Sega people go now, the, the, the pendulum will probably flip back to like Nami or whatever. So it's like if you could sort of intentionally sacrifice your own people and then the pendulum flips back to the other side and you're one of those last two Sega people, that actually puts you in a really good spot. And I think Charlie actually mentioned it where he's like, if Mo's the name and she has to go, like, I'm not going to fight back because I have to look like I'm willing to, to play ball here. Uh, so I thought Charlie had a really good episode in that sense. Uh, even his name gets brought up, but it never even has any serious momentum, um, even though I think it was the right name. Uh, so, yeah, it's like Charlie is one of the one of the few people at this point who I think is like really dialed in. So I'm, I'm hoping for the best for Charlie. Yeah, I I agree. And I also feel like it is important for them to remember that, like, although this is the mergatory, uh, only one person is winning a million dollars, right? Like, and so all of that, we ride together, we slide together, but mathematically, statistically, the way the game works, one of y'all got to go. And yeah, I loved, I, again, like I said, fight the power. Like, I am with the solidarity. I love it. But it's like, but now you're not playing, you're not coming to the table fair, like just on optics alone. And it's yeah. like, so what did you think would happen? Like they would be like, ooh, exactly. Let's, exactly. let's go with the let's go with the one, the solid ones that if we go with them, we could pick them up. Then I was mad at Tim and his confessional because Tim gonna say his confessional. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I didn't say I, we're not against Mo, it's just you, Venus goes. And then Mo goes. It's yeah. like, and the thing is too, he he sort of hops on the Mo. I feel like eventually, inevitably, he hops on the Mo bandwagon and votes her out. And it's like, well, if you were, you know, if you were willing to cut that the whole time, then you have to present that image because them cutting Mo, I think, will help Sega to be like willingly down to cut Mo. But they should have just like agreed on that from the jump, sacrifice Mo showing that they're willing to play ball and then they can keep the rest of their numbers a lot easier, I think. Um, 
Yeah. Do you think that do you guys think that this I would say the merge gameplay here was pretty messy and it was fun to watch, but there was definitely some sloppy moves going on. Do we think that's sort of a product of like the three tribes in the new era where one tribe goes to all these tribal councils, two tribes really haven't been like battle tested at all. So there's a lot of players that sort of slip through the cracks with no, not much, you know, tribal experience. Maybe they're not the best players that slip through the cracks because they would have been voted out had they gone to tribal uh, or is it just sort of like the circumstance of the season that it's a little bit messier? Um, but or, or, or do you guys attribute it to maybe that, that sort of situation with Yacht, like with those tribes not going to travel? I think that contributes to it. The, if they don't have a lot of experience there for sure. And then you got three tribes and you throw them on this beach and you have half of the um, cast being immune. I just yeah. think, I think it's a lot of shaking up and it's and there are a lot of players that haven't been to the the tribal council survivor school yet, you know, so, um, or, or haven't been through it as much as say a, what's the purple tribe? Yano. Yeah. So well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to, well, actually but, on the, it's, on the, it's on, like, I, go ahead. Now I was just going to say, it's like the dichotomy of it all for me is that, you have to pick a side though. Like you have to move one way or another. And so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I just wanted to, I just wanted to say that on the on fire pod, I thought D actually made a great point to Jeff where she pushed back a little bit and she's like, well, Jeff, this whole like new era, there's nowhere to hide thing isn't true because sometimes never go to tribal council. <laughs> it's like, yeah, even now there's players that like um, Tevin and Hunter have never been to a tribal council. Uh, but I mean, but, but so I agree, but they're not just hiding, right? Like because Hunter went to that excursion, excursion and, you know, bring your friends to work Alliance, like they're covered and protected. And Oh, I don't mean that they're like hiding or floating or anything. I just mean more so the fact that it's like J Jeff is sort of like this new era. It's tougher. There's nowhere to hide. Like if you're a weak player, you will get exposed. It's like, well, not Hunter and Tevin specifically in this season, but it's like there are people on that on these tribes that have gone to been vulnerable at one tribal council, no tribal councils. So you could theoretically be a terrible player. I think Hunter and Tevin are both good players, so this is not the example that I'm, I'm making. But you could theoretically be a bad player and have made it this far in the game, and effectively you you did hide because you won a lot of, and th not like you actively hid, but you you were not exposed to the challenges of the game because you, you were safe the whole time. You might have been hiding in plain sight. Oh. Jackery, do you know what shouting means? What what means? What shouting means? Shouting? Mm hmm Like yelling? Do you know what like speaking in tongues means? Yeah. What is it? That's like you're basically speaking like a language that is doesn't exist. Like you're speaking mm -hmm. like the devil's you're speaking in Oh no, 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 no. It's no, going no. the other direction. It's yeah. the other direction, uh Jackery. Uh in I can only really tongue? speak from a uh, black Christian church perspective, but in the church, uh, when people are like filled with the Holy Ghost or they catch the spirit, like, you know, the pastor might be preaching or the choir might be singing and they sing in a song that touch you. Give it to God, give it to God, praise him, praise him, praise him. Well, I, thought I thought it could go both ways. No, I mean, but we only go one way, okay? We going up. Uh, yeah. Not yeah, speaking in tongues. I, I feel like Jack, you're thinking of like exorcism type stuff. Yeah, but oh, it man. is it's like you know, speaking in tongues is sometimes people do attribute it to like it's there are times where in church people speaking in tongues, like they say it is the like yeah, the so blood of like Jesus coming through you. speaking through you. Right, speaking yeah. through you. And I feel like in this new era, it's like a way, a form of giving praise. I just want to say that it was not on my survivor bingo card at all this year to have Tevin and them have the word out, okay? And Tevin be like, oh, 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 I caught the, oh, you better, you better praise the name of Jesus, Tevin, okay? Again, 
I love the diversity. Uh, I love the casting. I love the fact that there is someone like Tevin that shows up at himself and he's speaking in tongues. Okay. Like, you know, <laughs> we, I had to text really cool. Joey Hatch and said, Joey, when you watch this episode, you are going to go see Jesus when uh, a certain part comes up. So I just, I love just even seeing Tevin <laughs> speaking in tongues. Bye bye. So bye to that um yeah that was cool to see with the subtitles and uh to on the diversity note i think i saw a tweet from the survivor um or from gia or the survivor diversity campaign essentially saying that there are five african-american people that made it through the merge and i don't know mm. if we've ever had that before oh give it up okay hey, give it up hey. diversity Hey, I don't see this happening, but what if we had another cookout? What if we had a real camp out? I love it. And, you know, I have seen some people like the hate or I have seen some hate towards Tevin uh, going against soda. Right. And like, them, you know, and a lot of people like I can't believe it. But here's the thing. Right. Also in the diversity initiative. Right. A huge part of that was. We want it so diverse so that you're not forced to have to play with somebody because like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you out there to play your own game. So while, although I don't love it because I do love Tevin, I do love soda. I also love the fact that it is the freedom that Tevin could be like, got my eyes on soda, right? Like, you know, they're able to play their own game. And so sometimes I feel like in the diversity initiative, when we talk about it, I don't think people get to see that side of the card. And for me, I'm at it. Let the games begin. Bruce and Couture. Yeah. Prime example, right? Like, you know, it's like it, we would love to see them work together, but also it's like it because the game has evolved, it's not like automatic or, you know what I mean? Or like, you know, with Wendell and Jeremy, like just because you're, you're just because y'all say, hey, what's up? Uh, oh, uh, oh, there, Nelly. But wait a minute, because I wanted to talk to y'all about somebody. This don't got nothing to do with Survivor, uh, but... <laughs> is going on hold on oh jack do you know who is i don't know why this kind of sort of sort of came kind of comes up in the the talk uh what's his name is this him it's i thought it was somebody else though it's not it is him though but Carson? all right y'all can keep talking sorry i i, I come back to y'all don't say that bryce we're we're recording a podcast over here i don't know if you knew uh oh i can't I guess what I'll throw out while we do the searches. Now that we're, now that we're well, I don't know. Is that, is that fine? Um, Please do. Now that we're six seasons into the whole mergatory, what do we think about it? Are we into the mergatory? Are we are we out on the mergatory? This mergatory seems different, right? Like I feel like in the past mergatories, it hasn't been this cut and dry. Like I feel like he will play with him. Like, I feel like this time it's like, we just got there. Uh, uh, uh. Here's proof that somebody on production listens to the Purple Pants podcast. What is he doing, Jack? What, what? How did they divvy up the tribes this time, Jack? Please explain this to the viewers and the listeners. <laughs> I mean, they're pulling rocks out of a bag. Which okay. Is they, they All right. Now, now, now wait, 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 Jack. Jack, now yeah, let me like also ask you a question. Let me also ask you a question, Jack. How was the tribes dispersed? What do you mean? Was it one know? side more Sega heavy, one side more? Um, It was pretty even, except all huh? the Yanus were on the same tribe. That PA assistant last season messed up with the tray during the merge and he didn't scramble them up. That's why the merge, uh, that's why when they broke up or when they, they did the tribe swap, but they did their job today with the rocks. That's all I'm going to say. All because of you, Bryce. I'm out First the going. diversity initiative and now the bag of rocks. Okay. <laughs> the bag initiative, the rock initiative. The rock initiative. But- Am, am I the only one? Do y'all not feel that way? I really felt like it. the mergatory didn't bother me as much because it didn't come as a surprise. 
Yeah. Or is it just because we're just used to it? But I just, I felt like it was just a well, little bit more cut and dry. Obviously, now it's a little bit more ex- of an accepted part of the game. So they're not like shocked by it. And there's no hourglass. My issue with it, and I feel like I sound like such a hater, but mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't think I'm alone in these opinions. If the shoe um, fit. <laughs> my, my issue with it is, I think, again, I think Charlie actually nailed the nail, hit the nail on the head pretty well at Tribal. When he says, like, I feel like I'm playing goalie on this group and I'm not taking any shots. I'm just deflecting everything. And I think it leads to this pretty unfair dynamic and also not very interesting dynamic where anybody who's vulnerable basically has to play defense. Even if you throw out ideas kind of like Venus did, it's like, well, you're not even safe. Like, what gives you the right to start throwing out ideas? And then everyone who's safe, like, doesn't have to worry whatsoever um, and can be like really in attack mode just because they won this challenge. And I just think it leads to this um, situation where dichotomy, it's just, yeah, this dichotomy that's really out of balance where the vulnerable players are just can't really do a whole lot. And then the players that are safe can like control everything. Uh, And I just don't think it's that interesting. I would rather like, why can't we just have a, a merge of regular merge where everyone can vote? That's where interesting stuff happens. And that's where there's room to like make bigger flips. Uh, I just feel like with seven out of 13 people being safe, it cr- sort of creates this like stagnation where there's not really as many big moves that can be made because people are safe. And I, I don't know. I just think it's a little Did, bit. <clears throat> but didn't people have that same uh, thought process prior to the new era, uh, like with the the voting blocks? Remember, we, we, like we they got to break up the voting blocks. Uh, which is why I feel like they've gone to this new method of the three tribes. So it's that like these voting blocks don't happen and that the season is just a pummet or a pummel all onto one person. Well, I don't know. I, when I think voting blocks, though, I think that it, it implies that the game is very fluid and people are jumping around, forming new blocks, which I actually think was very good quality I, survivor to I, watch. I and thought play. they meant by the voting blocks was that like... They, they stack like them up and then it's like one like, right and then they just kind of like plow through the game well i don't know that's sort of been happening anyways so i don't think that has to do with how they construct the merge um i don't know i'm not really a fan <laughs> of the merge. and then and then obviously we see in the teaser too it's like we're gonna have another where they split up into two groups but see, um, now, now that now that's where it pisses me off let's start getting these individual immunities. Like I want to see, exactly. but, but I also feel like they do that maybe to protect. I, I feel like they do that to maybe like protect the more athletic people that could then potentially, I don't know. I feel like they do it to kind of still shake and weed up a little bit where it's, it's a game of mm, luck in the sense of you're safe from the vote. This half is safe. The other half is it. So it kind of like, if we want to get Wendell out and he wins, it kind of like, I don't know. For me, I don't mind it as much, though. I do still like the luck of the game. I don't hate, like, I don't mind it within itself. But the thing that bothers me is now we don't have, like, an actual merge vote until the final 10. And I love some of the best votes are, like, final 11, final 12, final 13, where there's, like, big groups that could really flip. Um and so we don't have a big vote until, like, I guess in, like, this season, it's like, okay, all of pre-merge, the most people, or this season, this era, all of the pre-merge, the most people available to vote is, you know, a group of six. And then you get to the merge, there's only six people you can vote for. And then you have a, sw- a swap, there's only six people you can vote for. And then you get to the final ten, and then sure, there's a couple tribals of, like, ten, nine, eight, but then you're back, and it's like, so the, basically the whole season is... You're picking out of this group of six, which just limits at most, which limits these options. But let me ask you really this. Solves gameplay. I, I feel like I ask you this every season, but in those smaller numbers, does that raise the the chance that your shot in the dark is higher? No. More effective. It, it, no, no, it's the same likelihood, but I, I guess I would you just say, say this like, every season and no. I ask it every season. No, it's okay. Three, six. Every time, but obviously, it's it what raises, I said, like, okay. obviously, it changes the value of your vote, I would say, and the likelihood that you would need to use the shot in the dark, 
right? Because if you're in a bigger group, it's just less likely that you're going to be targeted because there's nine other targets instead of five. Um, and in a smaller group, your vote is more valuable because it's one of six votes instead of one in ten votes. Um, right. I just wish we had these bigger like. So, I, I'm with you though, Jack. Like yeah. I, I, as I, I like it as well. Yeah, I mean, some of the best votes in the new era, I feel like, came at like the final eight, the final nine, the final seven. And obviously those are more crunch time portions of the game where those big moves maybe need to happen. So I don't want to put it all on those bigger numbers, but I just think a lot more exciting things can happen when everybody is an option. And I think there's something to be said about like the scramble that is so exciting to watch around the merge, but seven of these players don't need to scramble at all. Like just that paranoia that seeps in when you know you could be an option makes the game a lot more fluid but when seven people are all safe, they could be like, all right, well, we're all safe, so we can't even vote for each other. So here's our two options, and like, we can pick between the two options. But another – to that point, though, Jack, kind of to it, is the reason why, although I don't maybe agree with Venus's plan long run, I like the fact that she pulled the audible and was scrambling. And, like, you know, because I don't feel like Mariah necessarily did as yeah. much. So it's like – so. I agree with you, but I also agree with you in the sense of like, I like how, you know, Venus tried to do something a little here. Can I tell y'all something that kind of pissed me off this episode? Um, Sure. Yeah. Uh, so it got to do with my man, Hunter. No, shout out to Hunter. Uh, he's doing his thing. Uh, I thought hunter to get the idol was extremely easy uh i was y'all had jim out here becoming a marine biologist okay taking samples of the sand get you know getting the ph level adding a number subtracting something spelling something figuring out the dichotomy of the ratio <laughs> of ben's suspenders for her to get <laughs> her idol yeah, but Hunter, out. <laughs> the clue literally said, "Sit on the steps and dig." <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I mean, but I mean, shout out to my man Hunter. He did a good job. But I just, I wanted it something a little bit more elaborate. So, are you mad at him? I could never be mad at him. Oh yeah, it's not. It's not his. It's not his fault that they made it easy. It's more of like. uh Especially, I mentioned this before, if it's the beware advantage and you're supposed to get it by your tribe losing and then your tribe doesn't lose, so they're like, you'll have a chance to get it anyways without any downside. And then they're just like, yeah, just go hang by the stairs. Uh, uh, it's like, <laughs> that's the easiest beware advantage of all time. I think it should have been, would have been interesting if, you know, he has a chance to get it when the tribes merge, have it have something to do with the merge. Like maybe right. hide it. Have it be on the boat. Have it yeah, like have it be on the boat. boat. Have it be at the mergatory challenge. Have it maybe you have to lose the mergatory challenge if you want to get your idol. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like those are all much more fun ideas. Um than being like, all right, go hang by the stairs. Now he's just like a kid loitering at the stairs. <laughs> and, and then it's like, I love that uh, he just sat in one spot, though. Like, it was like, you know, but again, I'm very happy that he does have the idol. Uh, but I just, for me, after seeing yeah. Jim's task, I was like, oh, God, what yeah. is Hunter going to have to do? And it was relatively easy. Another thing about the idols is, shout out to Tiffany. Uh, also, I'm wearing her brand, a hoodie. Okay, shout out to my girl, Tiff. Uh, but That's fire. I can't imagine you guys see the back. Well, I don't got no hard for you to see the back, but the back that's her. Yeah. It's her, you know, shout out to Tiff, go to her Instagram, support her, you know, try to support all of the, the season's merch. Uh, I can't remember what she named her idol. Adelisha. And Alicia. Okay. Idalisha. Idalisha. Shout out to Idalisha. Uh, because that was something I just <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, also, I what were your thoughts on the challenge? 
I loved this challenge. It was very, in my opinion, reminiscent of Survivor Kagyan, our first challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, little different, but we had to push a cart, get bags, get over something, and make a puzzle. Uh, I love this challenge. And I also thought that another great equalizer uh, in the puzzle realm is uh, I loved how everyone had to participate in it. Mm -hmm. Have we ever seen anything like that before? Not that jumps to mind. I, I thought it was fun too. Like I, it, it's nice to make everyone kind of go at the puzzle. Uh, they're like, well, the thing I like about these mergatory challenges is that they're always very physical. You got to earn it. So they're, they're tougher challenges. Uh, and obviously the tribes were pretty mismatched on paper, but the girls and plus Charlie came through with a really valiant effort, which was fun to watch too. Um, it was actually got close and that was much more exciting than a, than a potential blowout. Shout out to soda because what I was trying to figure out was when they was helping Charlie get up, I just couldn't figure out what was around soda's face. Did they tie the buff around soda's face and they were pulling like the buff back to give, like to give Charlie even more leverage. You have to, you can't even see it in this picture, but in the episode, like, so mind you, this, I don't know why my underwear is here, but Soda woke up and it was like, <laughs> where are we at? Like, but listen, shout out to Soda for doing this. Uh, also, I was cracking up at uh, when they had to dive through the mud and Tevin got out. So I was like, where, where are we at? So, somebody, somebody come get me. And I love, y'all know I love Q. Y'all know I love Q, but I expected him to be a little faster in that mud. Okay, I, I did expect you to be a little faster in that mud. I just want to know how he let Mo beat him in the mud. Okay. Why did you expect him to be so fast in the mud? Because he's from Alabama? I don't know. I just expect Coach Q to be good at everything. Fair enough. Maybe you'll meet him one day and be able to ask him in person. Oh, I will. Oh. I will. Uh also, um, what did you think of Dr. Maria's gameplay, Jack, uh, when Q came to her and told her uh, everything? Because I was thinking, is there a world where you just go along with it and say yes? What was yeah. her response? Can you refresh my memory? Uh, she essentially, sh so she didn't say she didn't know, but she essentially was just like, news to me. Like, you know, like she just alluded to the fact that it was like, well, we really hadn't had that conversation. Yeah. 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 Like, she was thinking of Tim some type of way. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Now he's saying he doesn't trust Tim now. Yeah. But I can't really blame Maria a whole lot. And this is exactly why Tim should have given her some heads up is because you get that thrown on you. It's like, how do you, like, how do you, you're like, oh, I, I didn't know about that. Like, and even if you play along, it's like, well, maybe, for all you know, maybe Tim isn't actually that in on it. So now you've just committed yourself to something, even if it's like fake. And then you got to go check with Tim and he would might be like, we weren't actually going to do that. You're like, oh, I just, just said I was all in. Like now I'm in, now I'm in a dicey situation. Yeah, I, I do think Maria came across as like a little too, um, a little too hesitant. But it's like I can't really blame her too much. When did we lose is Bryce frozen for you? Either he's frozen or he's really thinking. <laughs> in that one position with his hand like this. So, um, what did you think? Oh my goodness. We had, <laughs> we had two Bryce's for a minute. Sorry. Bryce, you were stuck like like this. And we were just like, you must be really thinking through it. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to, like intently or as <laughs> with his eyes open. <laughs> but you, weren't, you weren't lying. You were really curious about what I had to say on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but... <laughs> there can't be an episode that I can't quote the great James Jones, but 
he always says knowledge is power. And so I just wonder. Not again. No. <laughs> Am I here? Bryce. You lost your first, I what just wonder. Uh, you said that James Jones always says knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So I just was wondering, like, should Dr. Maria just went along with it and took this information in? Like, I'm just asking, like, is there a world where that could have been a, a, a gameplay for her? So what was what is what is Dr. Maria's best way to respond to this information? Well, I mean, so if they're trying to be is Sega, right? Yeah. So if they're trying to be Sega strong, like, and you don't want to appear any cracks, like, you know, you pretending that you know this again still yeah. gives the illusion. And it's just like, yeah, 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 we good, we good, we good. And then it's like, you could bring this back to Charlie. Now you and Charlie got something that like, you know, it's like her bringing Charlie in on it, then her going back to Tim saying they good. And now it's like, not only do you have a couple of options, but now you really brought your number one in on it. And like, you know, that's just what I was like thinking could potentially happen. I think maybe, and again, this is tough because kind of caught Maria off guard, but I think ideally she'd be like, oh yeah, Tim mentioned a little something about that to me just to get my gear spinning and, and I and I was super down. I, I, I was like, but man, he didn't fill me in on the whole situation. So I'd love to talk a little bit more about it. Maybe talk with Tim and, and really get the whole like uh, the whole game plan. But I think just being like, oh yeah, I heard a little bit about it. And I'm super interested. I think maybe that's the best way to go because right. you don't maybe want to commit fully to it without knowing anything about it. But you also don't want to be like, I didn't know about that at all. <laughs> that a, yeah, it kind of closes off an option. I feel like um, it would be hard to just respond like that because Tim didn't say anything to her, correct? No, no. So if you're just like, yeah, I heard a little bit about it. That sounds good. And you don't really know what it is. Then it's like he might continue talking to you about. Yeah. So when I pull in my number one, that like he I guess agreeing like that might. But I also feel like Q gave up everything. Like, I feel like Q kind of was like, you know, he said all. And there was another thing I was mad at Q. At. I'm like, why are you saying the people's names? Like, you know, if you already like kind of don't trust him. I'm sorry if I. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Uh, you're good right now. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it was weird. I'm talking about there's definitely a lot of um, sloppy gameplay, but I didn't think this episode was particularly, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't crazy. But I do think they're starting to set up some conflicts and yeah. now they're like, finally, obviously they're all merged together. Those could, could potentially start to pop off because this vote was pretty straightforward, but was some of the conflicts we saw pre-merge are building on themselves here. There's cracks in, there's cracks in Yanu, there's cracks in Nami. Now Sega is losing a little bit of steam. So I definitely think things could start to get interesting. But all, and, and Jack, to, to your point, like there is some sloppy gameplay and there are some real players. And that combination, I think, is going to lead to some fun, some entertaining episodes. Yeah. I just hope yeah. it gets uh, gets started soon. <laughs> uh, so so you don't think this episode was entertaining? I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. I just thought... Ultimately, the vote was pretty. I was a little surprised it was Mariah, but it still like wasn't. It was so cut and dry to be one of those two that I wasn't like. I just wish there was more moving pieces, kind of. And I don't love the mergatory to be on it. Yeah, I agree. Well, we've gotten through the mergatory episode. Uh, the previews of next episode. Spoiler alert, Jack. Don't get too crazy. Uh, it looks like Tiffany, uh, Kenzie, and Q are could be some issues. Uh, and yeah. or I mean, well, I guess we need to talk about the last thing. It's like I love Mo. I think that she's great. Did she eat at that move at Tribal or was it like a little too late? Because I feel like I think it missed the mark. I love Mo, but I agree with Q. Like, I think you should have given that information yes. before we get here. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I mentioned earlier in the episode is you're coming in on the 
like I don't think she I think her relationship with Sega still could have been fine. So I don't mind her wanting to maintain that. But what you should do is like, yeah, I was left out of the vote. Like I and I I still like my tribe and and but she's like, yeah, obviously I was the one person left out, so I'm open to options. I think that sends a message to Nami and Yanu that you're not a target right now. And so why well, I don't know why in the world she basically stuck with Sega with this lie but stuck with the people where she was on the bottom. So she was going to be the person that they are willing to let go of. And yeah, saying it at tribal is just like, well, you just lied to us all day then. Like what, what do you, it's like, it's weird. It was a weird hail Mary that never needed to happen. If she had just allowed herself to be more of a free agent. I think she got too comfortable with the the good vibes of Sega and wanted to be stuck within that, but it's really she had to branch out a little bit. I think I think this is a great case study what, looking at Sega compared to looking at Reva and just understanding that once you go to the merge, um, it's great to have the some disposable pieces. In Sega's case, they're like, no, we're unbreakable. That's almost like our Navidi Strong that we had going. We were acting like it and really we had a lot of disposable pieces. Um, in Reva's case, they're like, you know what? By looking like we are fractured, that will actually absolutely preserve this four. So we will act like we're disposing us at willy-nilly, but in actuality, we're preserving the tight group. I think similarly with the cookout, they all had a plus one so that it didn't look like it was anything. It was like now, and, and they were like letting go of their plus ones, but really it was really the cookout. Bryce, you're good. I feel like they are fractured more than I think they let on, right? Because it's like, there is a hierarchy. When Dr. Maria is talking to us in the confessional, she clearly states out, like, Charlie, uh, Charlie Ben, Dennis, Tim. And so maybe really what the issue is, is that everyone's, maybe they they wouldn't be able to come together on who really is the disposable one. Because maybe to Dr. Maria, it might be Tim. Maybe to Mo, at, like, you know what I mean? So maybe that is the reason why it, yeah. Or they did such a good job with their alliances that they made those other people, like, just think that they were, like, really all that tight. Like, no, it is all of us together. I don't know. But, yeah. like, clearly, this is not the way to, this is not the way to move post-merge. You got to be able to work with people yeah you have to be cohesively loose yeah i ain't never loose but no you do you have to be cohesively loose also it's like a huge shout out to dr maria okay uh she's another big dog in my opinion she's not the biggest dog but she is it's like what do they call them the, um, the dogs that like watch the farm right I feel like the, the big dog, dog, yeah. Like, you know, I feel like the farm animals are asleep and all the dogs are laying down. I feel like there's some coyotes over there in the far left. And I feel like Q, whoo, I feel like Tim, whoo, I feel like uh, Venus, whoo, they all like, whoo, what's going on, right? And I feel like Dr. Maria is like, whoo? you know, like, like she, like she, her aunt, like, she up. She like, okay, it's a coyote running, but I'm going to let the mother dogs go run to the perimeter. So, because, again, for... How do you these analogies? For Tim to name her in the Bring Your uh, Kid to Work Day Alliance, and Dr. Maria say, <laughs> essentially, he's the disposable one. And her, like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's a social game. Like, I'm just Absolutely. saying, though. No, she's in a great spot. I think Charlie's in a great spot. We love I think Charlie. Kevin and Hunter are in a great spot. Mm -hmm. I think Tiffany's in a really good spot, too. I think that's yeah. my top five right now to, to potentially win. Okay. And before we go, I found the person I wanted to ask you about. Do y'all know who is, I believe his name is, Isaiah... Hartenstein, the basketball player. Mm -hmm. uh, why, where is this going? Oh, nothing. I mean, 
on the next, right? Of the Knicks, Melo is still my number one, but you know, finding out that Isaiah Hartenstein is half black. Uh, he's half black. He's half black. Okay. Wow. They, they call him bright skin, is what he said. Uh, <laughs> but no, it, uh, is he a Survivor fan? No, I just saw the interview. It popped up in me when we were talking about the diversity and like, you know, you can play your own game. And he was saying how <clears throat> on his team, when people that didn't know him, like some of the brothers on the team, when they didn't like know that he was half black, they was just like, hey, what's up? Then he was like, you know, when they found out that he was half black, they was like, what's up? <laughs> uh, but yeah. Yeah, it was from a handshake. It was like, yeah. half black, but... I guess I can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you gonna uh, tell the the posse, Jack? Tell him what? You are you mixed? Oh, <laughs> uh, what? Are you mixed? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Announcement coming soon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it I'm was. I had like some big news that I forgot about. <laughs> it was sad to see our girl Mo go home. Um, I definitely think she had a. I definitely think she could have been a problem had she lasted longer. Uh, I definitely think she had a lot of game left in her. Uh, it sucks to see mm. another robbed queen go home. So. Before we wrap up, I guess for for future players, what's the take? Is there like a takeaway here from from Mo going home? Like, what's the lesson here? Uh, if the last tribal that you go to, you are left out of the vote, and your number one goes home, you don't need to scream to the cows come home that you're on the bottom, but. It would, you definitely, as you are build, it, there's no point to stay tribe strong, right? Like, you yeah. know, you can vote with them, but you definitely should be communicating and figuring out where and how you could belong. Uh, and I don't think that the only time is at tribal is my takeaway. I agree. Yeah. Speak, yeah, don't, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Don't wait till tribal for that like big aha moment. Um, or if you're waiting for tribal for tribal for that moment, give that announcement, stand up, and now start politicking with people if if that's what you are doing. But still, use this tool, use this uh, this information a little earlier so that you can actually manipulate some votes. Yeah, I do have another question, and this will be my last one. <clears throat> Q. What he said to Mo at Tribal was absolutely right. But also, is there a world where it could have been a little too, like yeah. a little too, <clears throat> you're running the show? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Q's in a great spot. Um, right. He's very outspoken. But we love. As a viewer, we love it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, no, no. I think his, his head's in the right place. But yeah, him being the guy to be like, here's what you should have done. I mean, he's that guy. He's the coach. He's the one right. calling his thoughts. Um, That's going to get him. Makes you stand out. That, yeah. yeah. He's, too, he's too visible and too vocal. And that's uh, and too strong and big and all the, like that's gonna get him off the island. But Bryce, do not make any no Diddy, okay? No Diddy. Oh. But it's crazy because it's like you you can see in Q where these attributes come from, right? Like it's like it's in his DNA. And so for me, it's like it's just interesting to watch him as a player because honestly, it's like he really does want the best. He really is uplifting, and it's like it almost kind of goes against what he has worked so hard for. So it's like, it's just very interesting um, to the point where it's like, it's almost like, I kind of want to see like 
Dr. Jekyll. Like, I want to see, like, you know, like, I want to see Q one day, like, not give a, like, like, just, like, I don't know. It's it's interesting just to, when you get to see these dynamics in a person, uh, because we love Q, uh, and, but it's just so interesting to see. He's used to being so visible. He's used to being so uh, strong. Okay. Brown skin. Okay. Tall. Good, good episode. Masculine. Good. The leader. Okay. Kind of want to do a power ranking now. <laughs> oh. That would be fun. Bonus yeah, covers. That okay. could be fun. You guys have like an event right now, though, right? We do. But I mean, we should. Uh... Can I ask, can I ask then, your, who's your top three to win right now? For me, I'm going. I'm sticking with my Issa look. I'm going Kenzie, Dr. Maria, and Hunter. And those were your Issa look people? Uh, well, Kenzie is. Uh, and Dr. Maria was high and Hunter was high. So, yeah, I'm I'm sticking to them. Wendell? I got Tiffany. Let's go with Tiffany. Oh, oh Shut up. Yeah. Anyone That's else jump out to you? Nice. Wendell, does anyone else jump out to you? Uh, I got what about Jelinski? I'll take Tevin, but I think Tevin's like Q in that he is so um visible and charismatic that they're gonna they're gonna pop him by like six, seven, five, six, seven. And then do you have if you had to pick someone from Sega? Sega. Uh okay. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> oh, I didn't know we were picking from all three tribes. Well, you we weren't, to, but I, was, I wanted three, and I was, so I was figured like uh, you, you, give me a third. It doesn't have to be Sega then. Yeah, yeah. Um I'm trying to take my um social media the things I see on social media out of this. The tweets and whatnot and the photos and stuff. So let's say um which are fun though. We should talk about one. We should talk about that in our power ranking. Okay. Um, so I'll take do 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 I need silence. Do 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 since you got Maria, I'll just go ahead and I'll take uh I'll take Charlie. Oh yeah, well, Wendell, your, your three is the like, exact same three that I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say Tiffany, Tevin, and Charlie, I think. Wow. Um that's, I mean, how have... you, that's how you do your Morehouse, brother, Wendell. Fine, I'll take Tim. You got Charlie. You, you can have Tim. <laughs> <laughs> uh I I'll, I'll throw in Ben as like a dark horse. Yeah. Throw in Ben as dark. You know what? Actually, give me Liz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, but oh, it was so funny after Mariah got voted out. You saw the um, tweet. You had the tweets where it's like, oh, oh. No, it was like, wow, Mar Mariah. Or you, it was like you made the. It was a picture of Mariah. It was like you made the ultimate sacrifice so Venus could stay. We'll miss you, Liz, because <laughs> they look really similar. The poll um, wrote, she got voted off because she's so rich, and because because <laughs> you know Liz is like so rich. Yeah. The Mariah got voted off because she's so rich. I saw, I saw a funny one too. That was like, they've been in Fiji so long, the orange tribe got a staircase. <laughs> <laughs> I think Wendell built that. Wendell could never, you know, you know, Hunter would have had to build that staircase. Uh, well, it's been a great episode. Thank you so much, Jack, uh, for moderating as always. When DZ is great. Uh, we'll see you next week. We'll be potting live from Dallas. We will see you in Dallas. Get your tickets to the Bryce and Win Present Tour Stop 46 to Dallas. We'll be back next week. Thanks for listening. We out, y'all. Survivor News. 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 Dot, dot, dot.